I haven't been here for a while, haven't uploaded any new videos for a little while, and there is actually a pretty legitimate reason for that. And I was kind of struggling with deciding whether or not I should actually speak to this or not, but then I thought about it quite extensively and came to the conclusion that the whole premise behind this channel and behind any kind of web presence that I have is to specifically identify and to document the things that happen in my life. And up until this point, I have been able to basically upload and post about fun things and things that interest me and kind of be the creator and the controller of what goes on in my curated online version of my life. Unfortunately, as the universe likes to remind us every now and again, we don't actually control very much that goes on and a lot of the things that happen to us are literally happening to us and we don't get much choice in the matter. Some of you who have watched some of my previous videos would know Greg. He is my fiancé. Unfortunately, his stepsister Rachel passed away very unexpectedly at the age of 27. Rachel is somebody that I only met a couple of times and kind of briefly and it was kind of logistically two ships passing in the night. However, I had heard a lot about her and I think that that kind of speaks volumes for the type of person that she was. I got to hear pretty much weekly, if I can average it out, from Greg stories about them growing up together and the things that she was doing in her current day, the kind of work she had done in the past. Rachel had a lot of friends and she was very social and she really liked to organize parties and she was a family-oriented kind of person and she worked in the health industry and she was working specifically in the kind of assisted living aspect of that and she was working with a lot of seniors. The service was last weekend and it was incredibly draining, incredibly beautiful. It's always amazing to see how many people show up to a funeral. Um, one of my best friends died when he was 25 and it was crazy to see the hundreds of people that came out to support the family and to grieve and mourn and pay their respects to one individual. I always think that that's so crazy that one person can affect that many lives, but when you are forced to see the literal and the physical effect that somebody's had on other people, Unfortunately, it's usually due to quite tragic circumstances. Quite a few people spoke at Rachel's service and all of them were beautiful. Some people knew that they wouldn't be able to speak on behalf of themselves, so they got close family friends to do that for them. And I was amazed at how many people were not only volunteering to speak um, for themselves, but also got through it. like. It's one thing to want to do it, and I'm sure everyone wanted to, but it's another thing to actually get up there and... <laughs> I think I'll edit this out. Um, it's another thing to... This is happening. <laughs> Beep boop up. Ugh. <laughs> it's another thing to actually get up there and say it. <sighs> okay. That's sorting itself out. Um, I think one of the crazy things about going to the funeral for somebody that has died young and died unexpectedly is the kind of anger that comes along with that. And Greg actually, at, at first I was going to deliver his speech and I'm, I don't know what it is, I love public speaking no matter what it is, like for my grandmother's funeral, my grandmother and I were very close. <sighs> and 
I actually um, helped my grandfather write his kind of eulogy for her and then I delivered it and I also had my own speech and it was one of those instances where I was, I think, being in front of a crowd kind of took me out of myself. I'm not typically standing in front of a crowd and I'm just able to kind of put on that presenter's face and go forth and get the job done. It's, it's kind of like this challenge and this task and it's something that's positive despite the circumstances. But I think with my grandmother, I mean, it's, it's reasonable for, <laughs> as much as it's horrible, it's reasonable for people to get old and die. And it's something that we as a collective have kind of accepted and been like, okay, like, we don't want it to happen. If we could find that jar of eternal youth, that would be great, but if it has to happen, at least this person has lived their life, they've had all of the opportunities that they can, they've learned what it is to grow old, and all the decisions that come along with that. I was talking to my friend the other day, and I was saying, like, it's so frustrating when I hear people, they complain about birthdays, they complain about growing old, and all I think about is my friend who died, and also now I'll be thinking about Rachel. These are people that wanted badly to have families, to pass down their lineage, to get certain jobs if they didn't already have them. They had career goals, they had ambitious social goals, and they never got to actualize them. So when somebody says it sucks getting old, like, that's a blessing, you jackass. Like, that's something that some people don't get to experience. And yes, you've gotten a year older, but that's one more year on the planet, one more year of experience, one more year with your family, and I mean, it's horrible to watch your parents or your grandparents grow old and decay and their quality of life to disintegrate and then finally die. I think it's probably much worse for a parent to watch their child just leave this earth unexpectedly. So I'm quite judgmental about people who don't like aging. I think they can suck it up and I don't want to be friends with those people. <laughs> I'm not a religious person and I don't... I don't believe in heaven or hell. I remember being a kid and having a picture book for god knows what reason and it was depicting hell and Columbus was involved somehow. But anyway, the important part was that I saw a visual of hell and I was quite young, probably like six to eight age, and I remember asking my mom, like, is this, is this where people go? Is this, is this a thing? And my mom made the decision, presumably at some point, or right on the spot, to tell me that if I wanted to believe that that place existed, I could, and if I didn't, I didn't have to. And being at that pre-10 age, um, the idea of an authority figure, specifically my mother, the woman that birthed me, telling me that if I didn't want to believe in something that couldn't be proven scientifically, um, I didn't have to, I think that really shaped me as an individual. When I think about a lot of the people my age who haven't really identified in any specific religion. They may have been brought up in the Catholic Church, for example, but they don't actually believe what they've been taught. I always kind of wonder, like, what, what happens? And if, you know, if we're all just stardust, or if we go off somewhere else entirely, or if we're just gone. It's just the light switching off. And that spark that was inside us animating these physical bodies, if that just goes away. Nobody has the answers, but I guess every time somebody dies you have to reevaluate and reassess. The last time that I saw Rachel, she was actually holding her niece, that same bubbling little baby, and her mother walked by. And <laughs> and she said that she was a natural. 
I'm the ugly crier, so I don't know if I'm going to keep <laughs> any of this in. I feel like I should. I can't normally cry in front of people. Um, but that's the point, right? Like, that's... That's the point of having this online presence. It's dark in here. Is it dark in here? Rachel was really special to Greg and really special to a lot of people. There were about 400 people at the service and somebody made the point the next day that more people would have showed up if they could have gotten out of work, had heard about it earlier, etc. And it's true, I mean, there probably would have been 500 people had everyone been able to make it. And it's just such a testament to the light that she was in so many people's lives. She was so accepting of everybody. And it's so strange, I mean, I got to meet a lot of her family, her brothers and their wives and their kids and I got to meet them and spend time with them at a birthday party and the next week I got to spend time with them at a funeral and they became more important people to me because of that and I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm the fiance of their little stepbrother. I mean, I'm not, um, I'm not top of mind or anything, but these people have instantly become very important to me, and I want to, and have reached out to them since we left and parted ways and went back to our normal lives, and... It's crazy that from, by leaving this world, she has somehow facilitated that. 